Hi guys, Jamie Humphreys here for Six String Alliance and today we have a quick riff and we are looking at Green and Tinted 60s Mind by Mr. Big as performed by the legendary Paul Gilbert. <laughs> So today we're going to take a look at the intro riff from Green and Tinted 60s Mind by Mr. Big, performed by Paul Gilbert. Now, Paul Gilbert is without a doubt one of the most popular and gifted guitar players to emerge from the 80s shrapnel scene. He's renowned for his incredible alternate picking prowess, his use of two-handed tapping, as well as string skipping and string skipping arpeggios. Now, Paul first came to the public eye in the early 80s when he was featured in Mike Varney's guitar guitar player spotlight column and he actually reached out to Mike Varney to audition for Ozzy Osbourne but Mike Varney didn't really see that uh, Ozzy would be interested in a 15 year old kid but then after hearing his audition tape they stayed in contact. Now Paul eventually moved to LA and attended the GIT where he eventually became a guitar teacher and from there on he went to form Racer X and released several albums on the Shrapnel label. Paul then teamed up with ex Dave Lee Roth and Talus bass player, the legendary Billy Sheehan, along with Eric Martin on vocals and Pat Torpe on drums to form Mr. Big. Now they released their debut album in 1989, which was just chop full of riffs and fantastic playing it had uh had more chops than a than a than your local butcher's shop it really was a fantastic album and showcased their technical prowess as well as their great songwriting 1991 saw the release of their second album lean into it which also saw them achieve mainstream success namely with tracks such as to be with you just take my heart and green and tinted 60s mind now this album also also included some of the uh, more technically driven tracks such as uh, Daddy, Brother, Lover, Little Boy, which was also known as the Drill Song, which saw an incredible guitar solo by Paul Gilbert, as well as that now famed harmony guitar and bass solo performed with Makita Cordless Power Drills. Following on from Lean Into It, Mr. Big released two more albums with Paul Gilbert during the 90s. We had Bumperhead and Hey Man, but he left the band to pursue a solo career and also reform Racer X. And it was during this time that Richie Kotzen joined the band. Now, Paul Gilbert rejoined the band around 2010, 2011, but sadly, drummer Pat Torpe was diagnosed in 2014 with Parkinson's disease, and he really sadly died in 2018. When it comes to equipment, Paul Gilbert has a long association with Ibanez guitars. We're going to talk about my Ibanez in a moment. He's had his signature model for a number of years. I think he's been playing those signature models since uh, around about 89, 90. I know he was playing uh, Ibanez when he was in Racer X from about 86, 85, 86, something like that. He's had a variety of different models. The original PGM model, which was uh, basically, I think it was like an RG body and it had the F holes on it. The ones that he played always had a fixed bridge. I think the original ones had Kayla trims on them. And then he has the uh, the new slightly uh, unorthodox shaped fireman guitars, which seems to be his main choice of guitar uh, currently. Amplifier of choice, Paul's used a wide variety of amps. He used to use the ADAs, he used the Lee Jackson Metaltronics amps, as well as the Lee Jackson designed Ampeg amplifiers. I would imagine it would be the Metaltronics and uh, possibly the Lee Jacksons that he recorded Lean Into It with. And then he swapped over to Laney amplifiers, and more recently he's been playing Marshalls. Now, Paul Gilbert had a profound effect on me. I was very much into Racer and Mr. Big, 
back in the day. Um, I remember buying that uh, Jimi Hendrix tribute album that he did in the early 90s, which was absolutely fantastic. I studied his uh, terrifying Guitar 101 columns in Guitar Player magazine, or was it was a Guitar Player or Guitar World, one of the two, and was very much inspired by Intense Rock 1 and Intense Rock 2. Now, I have a couple of uh, pretty cool Paul Gilbert stories Back in the day, me and my friend Phil Hilborn, uh, who was my old guitar teacher, we used to do the master classes for Guitar Techniques magazine and Phil would put together backing tracks and then we would be in the studio with a variety of players who I we get to, you know, they get to improvise over and I'd be making notes, watching what they were doing, talking about their playing, and then we'd transcribe the column. And we worked with Steve Morse, Vinnie Moore, Zach Wilde, Ty Tabor from King's X. Richie Kotzen and also Paul Gilbert. So it was, it was a pretty cool gig to have. And I remember, I think it was in 99, got to spend a whole day with Paul. I went and picked him up from his hotel, drove him from London to Phil's house, to his studio. And uh, we hung out for an entire day, got to sit with him in the studio, watching him play. You can see some uh, photos now from that session and, uh, and then uh, at the end of the day, I was meant to take him back to the hotel and uh, he was like, what are you guys doing? And uh, we're like, oh, I'm just going to hang out. So he was like, oh, I'd rather hang out with you guys. So we got some Chinese food and just spent the evening listening to old heavy metal, talking about music and playing guitar. And it was one of those incredibly memorable moments for me. It was just a great experience. And uh, I look back on that that session and that magazine article with fond memories. Now, also, I was lucky enough to get to play guitar with Pat Torpe. Uh, one of the visits when Richie Kotzen came over to play, when I was doing a lot of gigs with Richie in the early 2000s, Pat came over as his drummer and uh, really got on well with Pat. And then it was uh, on one particular gig, you know, get up and play. So I got to play some Hendrix, with Pat on drums, uh, which was an incredible honor. I feel very honored that I actually got that opportunity to do that. So let's just talk a little bit about the guitar I'm playing. Uh, I decided to resurrect my old Ibanez. Now I got this Ibanez in 1989, just before my 18th birthday. I think it was actually part of my 18th birthday present. I was pretty much obsessed with, uh, with Ibanez guitars back then. And this is a uh, an RG540P. Uh, you can actually see a white version of this on the front cover of Not of This Earth by Joe Cetriani. Now, I, when I got this guitar, originally it had a single coil in the, uh, obviously in the middle, and it had a single coil in the neck as well, and it had three little switches here. But it wasn't long after I got this guitar that I got a floral gem, which I so foolishly sold. If any of you out there uh, bought a floral gem in the early, early 90s from ESE Music in Maidstone in Kent, please reach out to me. Or if any of you know who bought that guitar, I would love to track that old guitar down. I've tried. It was a little bit of a mistake selling that guitar. It was an absolutely beautiful guitar, but during that period, uh, Ibanez weren't very hip anymore and I, I got rid of it. But uh, I kept this one. I wanted this one to be a little bit more like the Paul Gilbert guitar and also to have a little bit more of a sound like my gem. So I had uh, the uh, neck uh, routed out to have a to take a humbucker and I had a little cover put on here and I had a five way. So it's slightly modified. Um, it hasn't got the original pickups. I put um, Damasio PAF Pros, the same as my gem had back then and also the same as the Paul Gilbert model. And uh, you know, I used to even have the word applause on the back of the guitar in green, a little bit like Paul Gilbert. It's actually, I've got a, a blue Saraceno signature on the back of the headstock from 1992. But yeah, I absolutely loved this guitar. And this was a guitar I played a lot. And um, I've just, uh, yeah, just resurrected it for this, uh, for this lesson. And I'm thoroughly enjoying playing it. And uh, I think you're going to see this guitar appear a few more times. It's an incredibly cool guitar to have in my collection. So I'm running my Ibanez direct into my Mesa Badlander, where I'm recording direct from the onboard cab clone IR with a Mesa 4x12 cabinet, not using any other pedals, but I'm using an even tied um, a plug-in on the uh, UAD for that uh, detune chorus effect and a 2290DT, TC2290DT for a little bit of delay. Now this is a great example of using 
two-handed tapping for not just playing fast. It's a great example of how to apply it to a melodic riff and also how you can use open strings. Now, on videos that I've watched of Paul, I actually got to see Mr. Big back in 91 when Lean Into It was released and they played at the Marquee Club in London, and I had tickets to that. I remember leaning on the stage. I got this so early that I was at the front of the queue and just uh, got to Paul Gilbert's side of the stage and, and just had my face melted by his ampegs that night. It was so loud, that gig. I saw them quite a few times on that tour, but uh, he would play it with... Uh, he'd hold his pick in his uh, by folding his second finger over, and he would tap with his first finger and use his... Uh, uh, his thumb as well so he would use fingers to pick that intro I find it a little bit easier to hold the pick with my thumb and first finger and I tap with my second finger so the riff starts off by playing the open top E hammering onto the second fret and pulling off to the open E then we play the open B open E and then we hammer onto the seventh fret of the top E pull off to the fifth and pull off to the open so you have this then we place two to four on the G string. Open E. Five and seven on the top E. So let's put that together. Okay, the next part of it there, we're gonna tap 12, pull off seven, pull off five. So the next section, we tap on 17 on the top E. We pull off to 10, hammer 12, and then tap 17 again. Put that together with the first section. Then we pull off to five and hammer seven on the top E. Hammer 16, and then pull off to four on the top E. So let's play all of that slowly so far. Now this is the next bit's a little bit tricky. We're going to pull off to the open E. Hammer four and seven on the top E and then tap 12 and slide up to 16 and then back down to 12. So you get this. And then you pull off again to seven and then pull off to four and then pull off to open and the riff starts again. So you're outlining an E major arpeggio. Okay, so let's play through it nice and slowly. Remember to try and keep things as clean as possible and pay attention to not hitting any unwanted strings when you're, when you're skipping strings. Here we go. Okay, and then that just loops round three more times. As I said, Paul plays this, he taps with his, uh, with his first finger. So he's kind of doing this thing with his, uh, with his thumb and his first finger to play. He does it that way, which I, I find a little bit awkward. I'm not really that good at tapping with my first finger. I've, I've always tapped with my second finger. Okay, let's take a look at the final time Paul plays through. The tapping riff has a slightly different ending. So on that final E major arpeggio, he plays open, open four, seven, and taps 12, and then just slides that, uh, slides that note all the way up the neck in preparation for the next riff. So the next riff kicks off with 13 on the G and 14 on the D, a muted open E, and then we play 14 on the D and the G, and then we play another muted E, so we get then we play seven on the D and the G followed by another palm muted open sixth string and then we play nine on the D and the G plus open B and E so put that together
Then we play the same figure an octave lower. So we're playing one on the G and two on the D. But then we play an F sharp note with the palm mute on the second fret of the E. And then we play two on the D and the G. And then we arpeggiate. So open E, open B to second fret G. So. Then we play two on the A, two on the G, open B. Then we play A sus two. Open A, two on the D, two on the G, open uh, open B string. And then we finish off with an E5 chord. And he plays that E5, seven on the A, nine on the D and the G, and open B and E. So let's put that part of the riff together. Here we go. <laughs> So now let's put the riffs together and play it nice and slowly. Here we go. So that's a great example of using two-handed tapping and open strings in a very creative way. I also love these partial chords that we use to outline the, the melody of the progression. So make sure you try and keep this nice and clean, pay attention to the slides, and also when you're skipping over the strings as well, try not to hit any unwanted open strings to accumulate unwanted noise. As usual, you can follow the link in the description where you can download the free tab and guitar profile. And I look forward to seeing you here for more lessons very soon. Bye for now.